hello and welcome to a little equipment video so i haven't done one of those for quite some time now and yeah the reason i'm doing it is i have recently updated my vlogging equipment a bit so if you remember i think about two years ago i did a video where i showed you my vlogging gear and yeah it just consisted from then till now of a gopro hero 4 silver edition with a Zijun, uh, not, not the crane, I think it's called the Evo, was the little gimbal which I used to get stable footage. And yeah, this simple equipment I used for all my vlogs and yeah, it's, it has been very good and I've thought about upgrading it for a long time now. I was thinking about maybe going for some, yeah, mirrorless option camera, something to get some, yeah, higher quality vlogs but um, yeah I kind of like the simplicity of using the GoPro so I did update my equipment now but I'm still using a GoPro but I'm now using the Hero 7 and I've also updated the gimbal to a, a Fitec G6 and the reason for this little update is few things so for one thing what I noticed on some recent trips that the Hero 4 Silver I was using, when I had it on the gimbal, it was not weather sealed. So when I was at the coast, it was exposed to the elements, also in the desert lately, it wasn't ideal. And the Hero 7, it's weather, weather sealed and also the, the Fitec gimbal I'm using, it's also weather sealed. So that's one reason why I did this upgrade. Another thing, I was quite intrigued by the hyper smooth uh, feature of the GoPro Hero 7. So I did some tests already. Theoretically, I would be able to film a vlog even without a gimbal. And it would be yeah, kind of stable, but I'm using the gimbal to, to have it horizontal all the time. And also it's a little more yeah, flexible in some cases. And yeah, that was one reason. So this hyper smooth and some of the other options. And yeah, the final reason, <coughs> this gimbal I'm now using uh, it's quite nice because it has a feature which is called auto rotate mode and my other one didn't have it and if I want to do some time lapses with the GoPro what I can do I can set up the gimbal and have it rotate and I can uh, set up this rotation without using a cell phone so the only thing I have to do in the app is tell him how long a rotation would take, so a complete rotation, and all the rest I can just set up in the field by uh, yeah, moving the gimbal, showing him the way it should move, and then starting the rotation. And yeah, this feature is quite nice and will make some time lapses a bit more interesting. Yeah, and for now, I'm just walking around here in the forest, there's not much going on, doing some tests, yeah, trying the equipment because I just got it one week ago, and I want to use it for them, some vlogs in the future. But yeah, for now, gonna do some tests and to keep this video a little bit more interesting for you also I'll later show you the settings I use for this GoPro and also before to get the best or for me in my opinion the best um, yeah, vlogging footage and I'll also show you a little bit of processing so how I process the vlogs okay so that's it for now let's do some tests So I've now been using the GoPro and the G6 uh, gimbal for I think now two weeks and I've had it on a recent trip to Saxony, Switzerland. I did some shooting with it and overall I'm quite impressed with what comes out of this little setup and I'm, yeah, I'm happy with the upgrade I did. And I want to first 
go through a little pros and cons before I show you the settings and I have a little list here so I don't forget anything. So yeah, one thing I, I like about the GoPro and also about the GoPro 4 before, it's easy to use, easy to set up. So it doesn't get into the way of my photography. And that's the most important thing about this setup for me. So there might be some disadvantages when it comes to image quality in low light, but what for me is more important is the ease of use for, for this. And yet another thing is the image quality during daylight, there's really nothing to complain about. So if you're not into those um, soft bouquets, so if you're fine with having everything sharp in the frame, you don't need to worry about focusing, then this is very good. And also the GoPro 7, also I think the 5 and 6, they come with a, with a linear shooting mode. So if I use 2.7K as I was using on the GoPro 4, I can directly remove the distortions in camera. And that's very nice for vlogging because I don't have to do anything in post. I can't use it for 4K shooting, but that's okay for the B-roll I shoot in 4K. I can remove the distortions afterwards. It's usually not so much. And yeah, most of the time I think I'm, I'm using 2.7K. And yeah, another thing which I like now for the new uh, GoPros, they're water resistant or waterproof even without in housing. And that's what I said in the beginning. I can now have it on the gimbal and it's waterproof. So I don't have to worry if I'm shooting at the coast, the wave comes in. <clears throat> I don't have to worry uh, that the GoPro gets damaged because of some water. So that's quite nice. So now one thing I don't like, and that's very sad, I think. So they have this time warp feature, which creates some very nice hyper smooth, yeah, so hyperlapse videos. But they made this mode useless, I think, because they don't allow Protune settings for it. So you can just use it with the default profile from GoPro. And this makes it very hard to grade in a way that it works with the other footage you're shooting with the GoPro. So if you, for example, use Protune for your other modes and then do some time lapse in between using the time warp, you get completely different colors and this is very hard to grade. And yeah, it sucks. Honestly, I don't know why they didn't provide it. So I hope a future firmware update will resolve this. And yeah, I also have some points for the G6 for the gimbal. So one thing I like, it's quite compact, so it fits easily into my hand luggage. It's not very heavy and the battery, yeah, it works very, very good. So for a long time, I, I didn't drain it once now. And one thing which I like is, let's see, on this side, I can use a cell phone charger to load it. And that's very handy because I don't need to carry any external, um, yeah, charger. So it's more compact for traveling. This is something which annoyed me for some other gimbals. And another thing which I yeah, don't want to, to miss here. So the motors are a little louder than with my other gimbal. And you sometimes hear it in the audio of the GoPro. So the GoPro now, the 7, has quite good audio, which I think is on par with the GoPro 4, which I used before. But sometimes you hear, you hear a little bit of the motors. But if you mount the GoPro like this, it's not too bad. And I'll now show you a little comparison. So you see the audio compared the GoPro versus the uh, Rode LavMic I'm using. So you see what actually uh, comes out of the GoPro, which I think is quite decent. Hello and welcome to a little equipment video. So I haven't done one of those for quite some time now. Hello and welcome to a little equipment video. So I haven't done one of those for quite some time now. And after going through some pros and cons now, I want to tell you a bit about the mode I'm shooting with. So the GoPro, what I found also with the GoPro 4 is one important setting, as you hear everywhere, it's use GoPro, use the color profile flat, and then also set a white balance manually. Um, I was using the native setting a lot, but if you know exactly what's the white balance you need, for example, if it's sunny, use 5,500K, or if it's shade, use, I think, 6,500 or so. So if you know what your light settings are, just dial them in. It's very easy with the touch screen. Um, what I then do, 
I use, as I said, 2.7K and 24 frames per second. Um, this is for my vlogging. And I have the linear mode on in the wide view. So with the linear mode, I say uh, I get the um, straight lines, so no distortion. And this looks quite nice. Also, I have the stabilization on auto. And this would even give me a very smooth video without using the gimbal. But combined with the gimbal, it's very smooth now. Another thing which I think is very important if you have ProTune on, I use the EV uh, compensation, so the exposure, and I set it to minus one at least, sometimes even minus 1.5, because I find if I leave it at normal, the videos are always a little too bright and I hate nothing more than a blown out sky and you get this a lot in the bright daylight. If there's a little too much contrast and you leave it at zero EV, you get blown out highlights. And if you go to minus one or minus 1.5, it's actually quite good. You get a good dynamic range and you can usually pull up the shadows a bit in post, which I show you later. And another setting, let's quickly see. Yeah, I usually set the maximum ISO to 800 if it's okay. So I avoid filming in very low light. If I have to, I go up to 1600, but nothing beyond because it looks pretty bad then. And the sharpness setting, I have it to medium, which is quite good now. Also, what's important, the microphone setting, I set it to stereo, which gives me the best audio quality in my opinion. And yeah, that's it. That's for the settings. Um, I have those settings for everything else. Also, if I do photos, I have it similar. Only, as I said, for the time warp, I can't apply those settings, which is quite bad for the grading. But now let's jump into uh, DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you a bit what you can do or what I do with my vlogging footage. Okay, so now we're here in uh, DaVinci Resolve 15 and you see the current video I'm uh, cutting here. And yeah, let's just go to one of the clips which I haven't color graded yet. So you see the basic uh, settings I apply to such a GoPro clip. But yeah, before we do that, maybe one important point. I record audio and video separately. So as I said, the GoPro audio is quite good already, but um, it's not ideal, especially for vlogging. And I usually use the Zoom H1 with the Rode SmartLav Plus. So I always get two clips. So I have an example folder here where I brought in the vlog. So where I'm in the forest talking to the camera. And I also have this audio file which I recorded separately. And to sync those in DaVinci Resolve is quite easy. You select both and then you can use this auto sync audio and you can base it on the waveform. For this reason, you, you need audio from the GoPro, which is also quite decent. So it can analyze the waveform. If the audio from the GoPro would be yeah, too bad, if I wouldn't have much of my voice picking up there, this wouldn't work very well but like this it's very easy and after I've done this if I go to the clip attributes um, if I find them they are here and go to the audio you now see it has the link channel here but I could also switch back to the embedded channel which would be the GoPro channel but now I'm using the link channel and if I now drop the video into the timeline it will use the audio from the smart love. So it's very easy to sync audio. You just have to remember uh, which files belong to each other. Otherwise, it's quite simple. Okay, so now let's look at one of the clips here, which I haven't graded yet. So it's just this little clip here of me walking and I use the little auto rotate on the G6. Otherwise, you see it's using linear mode 2.7K which gives me the ability to do a little bit of dynamic zoom here. So I use this setting, which you see here on the right side, a lot in DaVinci, because the target format I'm using is full HD. So if I'm shooting at 2.7 or even 4K, I have some flexibility to zoom the footage. And this dynamic zoom here, you see those, this green rectangle and the red one, that can easily specify 
how he, ha he can zoom and combine this with uh, auto rotation. Um, yeah, it looks quite nice. You have some movement in the videos and I think that's better for the flow of the video. Okay, but yeah, back to the grading. So let's just take this video here. To grade the video, you go down here to the color tab in DaVinci Resolve. And this is a no complete DaVinci Resolve tutorial. There are many out there. And also I've done a few basic tutorials uh, in the past where I did explain how to do some time lapses. But basically what you have here, you have the media tab where you usually organize your footage. And you see I have this template here where I have all those bins. Then you have the edit tab where you cut your footage. And once you cut your footage, you usually go to the color tab and then go through all the clips and do the grading. What I usually do, let's bring up the waveforms here. Oops, not like this. <laughs> Always happens. So first let's make this smaller. Okay. So you see it's a little cut off in the highlights. So what's quite easy here, you can bring down the highlights a bit. And you see, let's make this a little bigger. You see, even with shooting at minus one EV, what I told you, I'm losing a little bit of the sky, but it's okay here for this forest scene. What I can also do, I can bring up the shadows a bit. And yeah, usually I try to use the complete range here without cutting any highlights or shadows. But as I said, if there's something lost in the highlights, you can't remedy it. For the shadows, it's not too bad to have them, some black areas, I think but it's, it's not good to lose any highlights. But here for this forest scene, it's okay. What you have here is this curves layer. You know this maybe from Photoshop. You can use it very similarly. If I'm shooting Protune, usually get a little more flat footage. So I can apply some contrast, some S-curve here, and also try to work a bit on the shadows to not lose too many shadows. So if I go too much here, it doesn't look so good. So it's basically the same as for editing uh, photos if you use Photoshop only slight adjustments are usually needed so you don't do too much and what you can do here with those you can work on the colors but I like to work on the colors individually which I can do here in this tab so the U versus U so I can for example target the red colors and make them more or less magenta and what I found with a GoPro, especially if I'm using the native color setting, I usually have to remove a little bit of magenta. But also here I was shooting on a sunny day, I used the white balance 5500. And sometimes there's a little bit magenta cast in the reds. So just a slight bit, I remove it. And this usually is needed for nearly all of my GoPro footage. And what you can also do here for the blues, Okay, and this one is not too much blue, but it's also, if you bring it down, it's more magenta. You bring it up just a little bit, it's making it more cyan, a little more green. And it's not much here, you see, but those settings I apply to nearly all of my GoPro footage. Sometimes more, sometimes less. And also here, the U versus saturation um, can usually bring down the reds a little bit, not too much, and the blues, they often need a little bit more saturation. Could also just use the color boost here, which works globally, but also interprets where there's already much saturation and where not. Or I can go to this other tab and just bring up the saturation. But I don't do this a lot. I rather like to work on the individual colors here. And it's usually something like this, where I bring down the reds a little bit and bring up the blues a bit. One setting, also here in this tab, which is quite nice, is the lum versus saturation. So if I bring it down on this side, I remove the saturation in the dark parts and I keep it in the bright parts, but this is too much. So I usually remove a little bit of saturation from the shadows, but only for the very dark shadows. And those are the basic color settings, which I do. Sometimes after I've done so, I can also adjust the temperature a bit to make it a little cooler and maybe also adjust the tint because as I said you always have a little bit of a magenta hue or at least I have it I had it with the GoPro Hero 4 Silver also have it with this one 
another thing which is quite nice so you see here there are all my settings now so in this pane you can similar to photoshop apply more yeah it's not called layers here but let's just say it's layers i can add another layer and in this one i can apply another grade and let's make this big again um, to give a bit more dimension and direction for the viewer i usually do something like this for my vlogs where i add a little bit of a vignette especially for the parts where i'm talking to the camera this helps to yeah, center the attention a little bit more so with this simple uh, circle window and you see here this makes it softer and then i can go to the to the curves again and darken it and this is too much so i just darken it a little bit see the before and after so this puts the focus a little bit more to the center so you can see you can easily grade your footage if you're shooting in the protune flat and it doesn't work so well if you're shooting in low light as i said but for normal daylight you get quite good quality and also a lot of possibilities here to still change the colors after the fact i now want to show you a little more challenging example also so let's get back to the edit and let's see if i have dropped this in so this is one video which i shot in morocco and i'll just drop it in here at the end of the timeline and if you've seen my morocco vlogs you might know this one so that's something typical where i have the sun and the frame and this only works so so nicely because i'm shooting at minus one ev if i had it at zero i would have lost a lot of uh, sky here but you see actually even though i'm shooting very dark um, the dynamic range is quite good i have detail on the shadows and um, the detail is very bad here because i have to use quarter resolution and pre-process the video so it works on my pc but looking at the dynamic range it's very good but how would i make this look a little better because this bright circle here with the hard edges doesn't look so good after all so i now show you how i create such footage here and i can start similar i can bring down the lift a bit so i'm using the complete range here I can try to bring down the highlights but not too much so i have to bring up the shadows to put a little more detail on me here i can work on the temperature make it a little cooler and you see here it's also We'll make it a little warmer because we're in the desert. Bring down the lift a bit. Some before and after, not too much. A slight contrast. So basically similar settings as before. Let's look at the reds. Yeah, not too much, just a little bit. Look at the blues. Bring it up a bit now let's look at the colors at the saturation so i make the blues a lot more blue and bring down a little bit of the reds and yellows but not too much so the sun still doesn't look good and now comes the important part so again i add another again let's call it layer and what i do here i go to the curves and make it very bright so you see like this hard edge you have around the sun here it's getting softer but everything gets too bright so it doesn't look good but i can go to this tab here to this qualifier and now smooth this out a bit so i bring up the low it's basically like luminosity masks in photoshop or the blend if slider if you will so i can bring this up and now here with this soft i can make this transition very soft now i bring it up even more and in the end now you see i'm only affecting the part of the very bright tones and now i'm just tuning it to have it at the sun maybe like this make it a little less soft and see the before and after and even though this now blows out a little bit more of the sky and I can bring this down a bit so it's not completely white. So 
So even though this blows out a little bit more of the sky, this is a smooth transition and it looks quite nice. So it looks high quality or higher quality than the normal sky blows, uh, blowouts or however you want to call it, you get if you film too bright or something. You usually have the hard edge around the bright parts and now this is very smooth. And yeah, that's basically what I wanted to show you. Some tricks I use to process my GoPro footage and make it look a little more cinematic. And also important again, you have to use the correct um, frame rate. So as I said, I film at 24K, and uh, not 24K, <laughs> that would be a little bit too much. So at 24 frames per second. And the important thing is also to have the playback frame rate at 24. What I did in the past for my seashell vlogs, I was filming at 25 and then had the playback frame rate at 24 here. What this means, it has to drop a frame once in a while and this gives you jittery footage. And I even see this in some videos on YouTube sometimes. If the frame rates from capturing to, to this playback or rendering here don't match up, there has to be some interpolation and sometimes you get some jittery movements or some, some strange blending effects. So the easiest way is just to film at 24 and have it at 24 here for the output and then for your vlog you don't have to worry. Okay, I hope you found this video a little helpful, interesting. It's been quite long now and also if you're a bit overwhelmed by DaVinci Resolve and all the settings I did now, as I said there are many tutorials, many good tutorials out there where you can learn DaVinci Resolve. It's a free software and they even have version 16 out there now, but it's still in beta, so I wouldn't use it yet. So the version 15 is just fine. You have many possibilities. You can work on audio and whatever. So combine this with some simple GoPro footage and you get a vlog very easily. So quite a nice thing.